Hi, welcome to Aviation Theory Virtual Classroom. This video is a short introduction to a potential pay-per-view ATPL flight planning course that I hope to make available in the near future. Details of the course presentation are still being finalised, but I hope it won't be too long before it's available. The video also includes a short summary of the course structure of the ATPL flight planning, followed by a list of requirements of what you would need to have in order to complete the course or to sit the UCASA ATPL flight planning exam. Before you start purchasing and watching the videos, there are a few things that we need to have a look at. First of all, let's have a look at an overview of the actual ATPL flight planning exam. Essentially, it is a problem solving exam. The planning is based on the Boeing 727. CASA could have chosen any type of jet aircraft, but the Boeing 727 is simply representative of the processes to be used. The main types of problem solving that we need to look at are number one, to find the amount of fuel required according to the Civil Aviation Regulations for both normal operations, situations where the engine has failed, depressurization and a variety of other abnormal operations. The other type of problem we may need to solve is to calculate some weights such as what is the maximum payload on a given flight, what would be the landing weight on arrival at the destination or we may even be asked to calculate a backwards flight plan to work out what the brakes release weight was, in other words the takeoff weight. The structure of this course starts with the basic skills. You will look at calculations of TAS and Mark numbers, some wind calculations and some interpolation. Then there will be an introduction to the Boeing 727 and a, a bit of a, a summary looking through the actual manual. Then there will be a number of videos looking at flight planning. It will first of all be broken up into segments and then we'll pull the whole thing together in a series of flight plans. There will be normal flight plans, we'll look at company fuel policy and we'll look at the reverse flight plans. Then there will be a series of abnormal operations to consider and how we actually plan those flights and allow for fuel and so forth. Then there will be a, a quick look at holding, followed by a couple of very important sections of the course where we'll look at critical points which will include the way the fuel policy is applied and how we calculate the location of the critical point. Then there will be point of no return. Once again there will be a bit of an introductory look and then we'll look at the different types of point of no returns and then we'll look at how to calculate them. Then there will be a series of demonstrations of how to solve problems that may be thrown at you in the exam. After completing the course, you should be able to access a number of revision exercises and practice exams. Before you start viewing the videos and completing the course, you will need a number of things, both for the actual course material and also for the flight planning exam. You will need to purchase a Boeing 727 Performance and Operating Handbook. It is available in a number of places. I usually call this the Boeing 727 Manual. You will need a number of Air Services Australia charts. They are available from a number of places. First of all, you will need all the high charts. And for my course, you will also need four sets of terminal area charts. These are not listed as required documents in the CASA exam. So you will probably be given information out of these in the exam questions. I would also strongly recommend that you download and look at and have a good read of the CASA exam information booklet. I call this the rules of engagement because it actually tells us things such as how the data is presented in the exam, the required degree of accuracy, how to extract data out of the flight manual and it even has some instructions on completing the flight plans. You will also need a flight computer, usually called a whiz wheel. I very, very strongly recommend that you purchase one of the larger ones rather than the ones that sit in your pocket because the smaller ones will probably not be accurate enough to get the right answer in the exam and you don't want to waste hundreds of dollars having to resit the exam simply because you had the wrong tool. There are two common models. The APR CR6, it's not commonly available but is available online 
and the more commonly available Jeppesen CR3. I have a very strong preference for the APR because it produces much more accurate Mark number solutions. You will also need some other navigation equipment. Casa lists these four sets of items that you're allowed to have. Doesn't have to be exactly as illustrated here. You will also need a calculator, a basic four function calculator. And what I have described here is an extract out of CASA's requirement. It can only have the four basic functions, can include a square root function, which by the way you do need. It can have a single memory, it can't have multiple memories. Percentage is not necessary, but it can have a percentage function on it. Anything more than that is outside what CASA will permit in their exams. You'll also need some stationery. I suggest an HB pencil for when you're using the whiz wheel. Anything harder won't erase, anything softer is probably not accurate enough. I also suggest a B grade pencil, 2B or a 1B would work. That will allow you to circle information as you're extracting data out of the Boeing 727 manual and it's more easily erased than the HB. You'll need a soft eraser so you can erase what you've circled. I also suggest a couple of highlighters might be useful. When it comes to watching the videos, if you decide to go ahead and purchase them, they are designed to be used with a workbook which has a bit over 200 pages in it that I've put together. It allows you to have an accurate written record of the course rather than you having to write down everything yourself. As you watch the video, you will see text that is highlighted in green. These are words that need to be filled out in an accompanying workbook. You will see here, for example, the word temperature and in the workbook that word would be written in the workbook as you work through the videos. You may need to pause the video in order to keep up with what I'm saying and to give yourself time to complete the exercise before you move on to the next point. Throughout the videos there are numerous exercises to be completed and the workbook has these structured in such a way that they're easy to complete. At the end of the workbook there are a number of appendices. There are a few pages of formulas that you probably want to memorize. There are a couple of pages of abbreviations and at the end there are solutions to all the worked examples and all the sample exercises throughout the workbook so that you can check your accuracy. I hope you enjoy viewing the videos and learn from them. Feel free to make any comments or ask questions on this YouTube channel. Cheers, look forward to hearing from you.